from Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Interconnect 2016, brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Interconnect 2016 exclusive coverage from Silicon Angles, the Cube is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We're on day two of three days, wall to wall coverage, getting the energy, bringing it back and no better guests than having the stars of the internet's open source coding world, GitHub, great company. And we have Matt Shars, product marketing and uh, Sandy Carter from IBM and Michael King, product marketing and GitHub. Great to have you guys on. Um, obviously, we love GitHub. We use it mm -hmm. extensively for our operation. Um, I just checked the commits, 5,000 commits on one app, <laughs> 2,000 commits on the other. He knows the negative deletions. <laughs> like I'm, I have to look into that later, <laughs> find out who's deleting what. Hopefully it's good deletions, but um, <laughs> thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks for having us, appreciate it. Um, I, I think GitHub is probably one of the most successful companies that has emerged out of the open source, what I call this, neck, this new generation of open source where you have full cloud, you have SaaS as a business model, where it wasn't a land grab. It was essentially a very easy way to get in, um, small fee, collaboration with open source growth, really, and you know what? Really worked well, real value, and now you made a lot of cash and then a big investment. So obviously that was already when you guys cleared the runway right. uh, and, and successful. So that's validation. People put some money in their pockets. But in general, it really is a showcase of, in my opinion, the collaboration mm -hmm. of how people work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And software developers on the cutting edge because they don't tolerate any BS. Right? You know that. Yeah, they need absolutely. it now. I'm doing DevOps. I'm doing whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. It has to work well. If not, you'll know about it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, it's very true. I mean, even the way that we build GitHub is on GitHub. So we, we know from developers firsthand whether or not the product's working well in that collaborative environment yeah. right. because otherwise we're not building a good product. He, Dave, Dave's in the research, Dave Vellante, um, co-host my partner, is in the research business. And I go, Dave, it's simple. The internet's easy. When you're wrong, people will tell you you're wrong. So just exactly. you know, listen and they'll tell you you're wrong. <laughs> Sandy knows she's on the social media maven. But that's, now, the, that's the key part, listening. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. So Sandy, um, IBM is San Francisco in the Bay Area, big new move. We talked about earlier segment, GitHub partnership. Talk about the partnership, guys. Share with the with the audience. People know GitHub as uh, in the open source and development, and there's different versions of it. But the deal with Blue Mix is pretty significant because it's kind of a nuance. But I want to expose that uh, value. Yeah, so we believe that for developers, this is probably one of the most significant announcements that we've made at Interconnect. And this is the partnership that's really expanded because we've had a partnership with GitHub. Uh, for developers, and this is around GitHub Enterprise. So the real value here for our clients is that most of their developers use GitHub today, and they are putting things out there that in some cases makes their enterprise, their company a little nervous. Well, this agreement enables them to have GitHub Enterprise inside of their company. So now their internal developers can use and leverage all the great features and functions that they already love in GitHub today and use all the time. They can now leverage that inside the enterprise and do that on. So is this and a new announcement? Movements. Because you guys had GitHub last year. Was there? Uh, is it we actually had for Developer Works Premium. Okay, we got had it. GitHub.com. We had five Git repositories or repos that were available as you purchase DeveloperWorks Premium. This is now on the GitHub Enterprise side that Got enables it. the enterprise the full as well. white label, so really, yeah. secure, people who want locked and loaded you collaboration it. development tools. And you know, you know, you could hear the audience sing this morning when uh, Michael mm -hmm. introduced it at the opening of our Debat conference because everybody in the room uses GitHub. Now they can use it in their own environments too. So it's just like yeah. you know, a double treat for them. Matt, I want to ask you guys, because one of the things I noticed, and, and it's probably not talked about much, but GitHub is a social network uh, and, and for mm. developers. And I even was joking with Joe Hellerstein, who was one of the founders of a startup, came out at Berkeley. All the founders put the GitHub handles on their about page. Mm -hmm. Most people put their like LinkedIn handle. Yep. They put their GitHub handle. And I, and I highlighted that because you, you don't see that very often. But in the geek community, that is very much the parlance for yep. looking at someone's badges, if you will, Absolutely. kind of like Xbox. Yeah, no, I mean, if you think about it, the, your, your GitHub handle is basically a software developer's resume. It's, it's where someone who's going to hire a software developer, someone who's going to either for a, for a project or a, or a job, that's where they're going to look first. They're going to see the quality of their commits. They're going to see the quality of the, the code they're producing, and they're going to do that on GitHub. 
It's kind of like gaming. You know, see who you're going to want on your team. That's right. If you want an A player, look at the A player. Oh, I need a support player. So it really is a gestural piece of data mm. that is ultimately your shingle that you're hanging out there. Mm -hmm. And open source enables all that. Yeah, and it's, it's also um, to that point, I've you know, had conversations with several customers. And for example, they're hiring a group of interns from a university. Um, and instead of there being a two to three month ramp up for them to understand all the internal processes, they're already using GitHub uh, in, their, in their classes. So they're able to get onto, the, onto their, their network as quickly as possible. And we have a 12 year old boy on the cube, early 10 May, who's coding away. Mm -hmm. So GitHub opens up the door. So for now for an enterprise, they can come in and say, okay, the new way to work as, as IBM's slogan is, is to be collaborative. And it's not always going to be physical locations. I know IBM's got locations all over the world now, obviously in Silicon Valley, but you can have a developer in, you know, in the middle of the US, in Europe, the world is flat. Mm -hmm. The developer community now, India is exploding right. uh, with uh, full stack product guys. So now you have a global landscape. Mm -hmm. yep. so this, yep. to me, under, opens that up. Can you, can you tease yeah, that definitely. out? In fact, you know, it's funny, IBM is one of our biggest customers, actually, <laughs> um, for the enterprise product. And, and that's, that's really what the enterprise product is all about. It's providing that same developer experience just inside the enterprise at scale. So it's enabling, um, it's enabling enterprises to both develop, collaborate, learn, and teach all at, in a secure and managed environment. I mean, this is where it gets pretty difficult, right? Because a lot of enterprises look at the open source community and they get kind of nervous. Yeah. It's not secure, I don't feel like it'll be, uh, the right stuff will get out. And, and, and so that, that's why we, we brought GitHub to Enterprise um, in 2012. We invented it in 2012 and we brought it out. Mm -hmm. We've been improving it and making it better and all that great stuff um, because our enterprise, our, our developers demanded it. You know, they, they use GitHub at home, they use GitHub in school, why can't they use it at work now? And that's the other cool thing about this announcement too, is now with Bluemix, where they're, they're able to use it in, in shops that maybe weren't as comfortable with uh, either running their own servers or, or, or putting it in some other cloud somewhere, they can now run it on a Bluemix local or a Bluemix dedicated instance and feel pretty darn good about the security and the management capabilities. Hey, talk there. about the local thing, because this is a nuance people might not know, they hit the buzzwords local and instance. What does that mean? And, and has a, is it a SaaS product on Bluemix? So, um, local, on the, is that the data center? I mean, explain our, this local thing. Yeah, so our, we have um, kind of three models that we believe people are leveraging cloud for. So one is a public model, and we have a, we have a great use case for public. We also have what we call private, and this is where local and dedicated comes out. So the enterprise can set up their own cloud, operate that cloud within their own four walls, and leverage and use all the great value of Bluemix that's automatically updated, they don't have to maintain it, and do that inside of their four walls. So that's what we're talking about it's here. On -prem, on the, on the, yeah, on -prem, it's on-prem, basically. It's on-prem, whatever, yeah. yeah. Easy way to say Local it, on-prem. Oh, local is like yeah, yeah, be yeah. like New York, Boston. <laughs> yeah. That's right, that's right. But no, but that's a, this is, a, but the benefits of GitHub is it's a geography boundary killer because right. it's virtual space, it's a social network. Yeah. Absolutely, and you know, IBM loves developers. GitHub, you know, has also fallen in love with developers, and more importantly, developers have fallen in love with GitHub. So mm. we're, you know, we're absolutely thrilled with this partnership and really extending it into the enterprise where most of the developers are today. They sit in the enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. We all like to talk about startup developers and they're super cool and we love them too, but more of them sit in the enterprise than any other place today. Well, depending on how you classify developers, I would <laughs> say modern developers, that number is increasing very fast. The demand Absolutely. is off the charts. Now there's some old school dudes out there like me, um, I'm not an enterprise developer anymore, but that's the <laughs> transition that this whole show is talking about. Okay, getting the new developers on this digital transformation is key. And that's and, big data, and, that's DevOps, mobile yeah. first. And to get them there, they need skills and they need help. And that's what GitHub provides. It provides them that community, that social network that you talked about, that enables them to help each other, which is the way they like to work. So Matt, Mike, I got to ask a question, because I'm not going to go into the whole, I know probably why Candy's here, because the whole PR things that GitHub's been uh, uh, involved in. But recently you've had some surveys about women coders and whatnot. But I want to ask the question a little bit differently, because I don't like to go there, it's a waste of time. Hmm. Culturally though, the developer population is certainly radically changing. And um, we had Tan May on earlier, a young kid, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. He's not going to outcoach since he's five years old. Now that's a little bit of a black swan, but it proves the point. Developers are now changing significantly the makeup of demographics and psychographics. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing with the product? Is the product evolving because of it? Can you share some insight around mm -hmm. you know, this new onboarding of developers? And by the way, developers with Swift is different than a C++ developer. Sure. So now you have designers, coders, and Sandy and I were talking about this earlier, 
the word developer is changing. Yeah, so absolutely. what are you guys doing to, to from a software standpoint, share some color around that? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a great question. And you have to think about uh, the way that, that development is current, occurring now is very asynchronous. Um, and I think where, as I mentioned, we dog food the product. We're a great example. We have 500 people at GitHub, and half of those are remote. And so we want to make sure we're hiring uh, not just the best talent, but people who represent the GitHub culture in the best way possible. And um, you can imagine in, in that type of asynchronous communication environment, a lot of things can get uh, misconstrued. <laughs> and you always have to think it's of... It's like text messaging, lost in translation. Yeah, it is. Um, a lot and, of gestural data that you just can't really get from a face-to-face. -face. Exactly. And, and something that we, we try to espouse within every communication we have at GitHub is assume no malice. Everyone is here to serve each other. Yeah. Uh, we want to be empathic toward each other. Uh, and that means if we do that the right way with each other, then we're going to build a better product for the world that is also going to help them serve those, those needs. Um, we have a great social impact team that is doing a lot of work around how is it that we make uh, open source development as a whole much more collaborative. Um, there's a lot of studies that show, um, there's one report that even showed that, that women uh, tend to have better quality uh, contributions to open source projects, but yet when it is shown that it's a woman contributing, um, their views are diminished. So how do you make it more of a, a gender neutral type of, of yes. contribution environment? I mean, These are all a lot of questions. A lot of male, skewed on the male side for sure, but the data and we were talking about earlier is showing that if you take away the gender biases on the names itself or the classification, there's a lot of women in, in programming mm -hmm. and diversity across the board, right. age and, and psychographic. Yeah, I mean, we feel very, very strongly that, that diversity gives you a better product, period. Whether mm -hmm. you're a designer, whether you're a developer, whether you're a, pr a product vendor, whether you're a, you know the largest technology company in the world, diversity yeah. gives you a better product. Yeah. I think asynchronous too does take advantage of the diversity. I mean, there are some translational issues. It's like text, I mean, like sometimes like, did you really mean that? No, no, it's just like you talk about right. like, oh my God, I thought it's hostile. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't know through, unless you really need, and Lini Watson basically soon will help you there, but, um, but taking it to the next level right. with virtual reality and now all kinds of new tools coming out. Mm. Sandy, this begs the next question. The evolution of the collaboration from a coding standpoint can go in many different directions. Uh, automating QA processes or looking at um, uh, push, uh, push notifications on code, alerts. These are the cool things that could come out of it. Is this kind of being kicked around? Can you guys share some uh, color around what's coming around, how to make it things easier? I mean, I was looking at my, my GitHub, I'm like, oh, I didn't know there was some deletions. You spotted it out. I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, I better look into that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, um, you know, if you look at, at Watson, um, she is a great coder herself and she can actually help coders uh, you know, be a concierge to teach them how to code as well. And inside of Developer Works, we already have a great architecture center that we announced here, where it has over 40 architectural patterns that people can learn how to go into the uh, cloud-based world, the cognitive world, because the cognitive coding world is different. You have different designs, you do things in a different way. We were just chatting about this the other day, right? Cognitive brings a whole new skill set to bear mm. that a lot of coders don't have today, and they're going to have to learn. They'll learn it through GitHub and sharing things. They'll also learn it you know, by, by being with each other and taking this to the next level, next step. Mm. Matt, Mike, I want you to share your thoughts on, on kind of Connecting the dots a little bit to the future. So obviously the show here, it's pretty clear. Developers front and center, get in early. IBM's committed, they're making some good moves. I've been tracking these guys for five years on here on theCUBE, but they got to execute on that. It's a whole different conversation. But sure. the collaboration software substrate's changing, right? With big data, some things Sandy's mentioning is going to change the collaboration aspect. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing and what are you guys seeing happening on that front from GitHub standpoint? And what have you learned uh, over the years looking at the patterns and how people are communicating and collaborating and writing code together, how does that translate to the next generation? Mm. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk a lot about the developer life cycle. And the developer life cycle really is, you, you start off learning something and, and then you build, and then you collaborate on that, people comment on it, people bring it back, and, and then you put it into production. But what a lot of people miss is that next step where you start teaching. And, and it's when you start sort of handing back into that community. That's something the open source community does very, very well. They mentor, they bring people up. You have a, you have a great commit or you have something you want to you put into the code and people say, hey, that was great. You know, maybe try it this time, next time. And, and it's like if you look through that life cycle, you go from learning something to teaching very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do with, with GitHub is, is take that same process and say, how do we shorten that? How do we make that life cycle even more rapid? Um, 
if you look at it, as, as, as writing code gets, I won't say easier, but more accessible, you know, Objective-C versus Swift, right? It's, yeah. it, it's Much a significant different. difference. Yeah. Um, the barrier for entry for people um, to code is, is much lower now than it was. And the demand for people so who can So mentoring becomes an interesting thing, right? That's right. In the sure. role of the community. That's so that things are changing just naturally. Growth. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And so what's going to happen is, is as those people become productive, uh, both through the, 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 that lower barrier to entry, but also through the, the way that, that, that GitHub and, and, and our community mentors uh, new coders, we think that's the only way that demand is going to be, be answered. Yeah. So that, that's kind of what we're putting into the product. So let's talk about the about impact why. of the customers now. Sure. So like IBM's customers and now your customers. <laughs> Okay, Matt, Mike, look, it, I need some help. Give me the bottom line. How do I get this up and running fast? Yeah. Okay, I, I want to get some wins. I want to knock down some momentum. I don't want to boil over the ocean. I get the long game here, but I want to get some wins pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to be agile, but I also got to gotta hit that proof point. Sure. How do I stand this up? What do I do? What are some best practices? What do I do? Mm -hmm. Matt, knows it, Matt knows how to do this better than anybody. <laughs> yeah, it's the best guy to ask. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Matt, um, you're on. Yeah, the, uh, in my interactions with the customers, a lot of times uh, you, ha you have this, uh, this cultural dichotomy. Some of them have been using GitHub, and so they're accustomed to the very collaborative element of it. The others uh, are, are very hesitant to it. And I think what you have to uh, really instill in a new customer is thinking about um, not seeing a commit to, say, a, if you're going to merge a PR or something along those lines, is seeing it as gospel. It's not canonized. It's always open for discussion. Um, but having some degree, I think, of, of oversight over who is going to make the final call on this is a really, really helpful thing to do. So it's, it, it's like you're making... Well, there's uh, democratization aspect to it. Yeah, you're yeah. saying don't take it as a matter-of-fact gospel right. and then get dogmatic about it. Yeah. If you so, take it and say, hey, let's review this and commit group as a group. Exactly. Consider it more like a, a conversation rather than a, a dictatorship yeah, of anything yeah. else. Yeah. Um, that, Dictatorships that is the, don't work well. uh, Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the biggest, <laughs> I think that's, source. <laughs> it's very true. Oh, it doesn't work at all. It, that's, but I think that's the biggest cultural barrier and, and I find that most of the customers that really get it and, and see immediate returns to how effective their teams are working together, um, spending less time in meetings, um, we've seen some customers go from 25% of their time coding to 80% of their time coding because they don't have to fill up their days just with schedules and conversations because it's all happening asynchronously. And that usually occurs when you, you start to recognize that that's a conversation. The asynchronous is a killer app, I've no right. doubt about it. Yeah. And the transparency too, the, the, the way that things are done out in the open. So if you have a question about why something was committed or a question about why something was, was done a certain way, all of those answers are right there for you. Well, and also people can pull stuff out and do stuff on their own. It's fully in the open. That's right. And then people can watch them like <laughs> playing with the code. Oh, he's onto something. So that draws more collaboration on it versus black boxing it. Certainly. So Absolutely. transparency is key. How about like voting and gamification? Are you guys seeing any dynamics on the roadmap relative to GitHub having more tools around, you know, straight up vote, like a Senate vote or like next Supreme Court mm -hmm. justice of the, mm -hmm. you know, code base, whoever that is. <laughs> I mean, there's always yeah. going to be some sort of opportunity because there's going to be conflict. Managing sure. the conflict mm -hmm. is a community thing that's been solved and managed right. governance. Mm -hmm. approaches, but voting is a good thing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. collaboration. It, it, yes and no, I, I think there's, <laughs> even if you look at some of the ways that, that other um, collaborative platforms have done it, some of them have done, you know, the thumbs up, thumbs down sort of thing. The way you have to do it though is you also, as we talked about being empathic to your other developers is, what kind of signal do you want to generate from yeah. doing that? Do you, because if you do a thumbs down, what does someone mean by that? Do they mean they don't like me? Do they not like my code? Do they not like my idea? I think, it, I think the thumbs down, is, I think Quora screwed up their whole product by having a thumbs down button. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Facebook never had a thumbs down button. They have a like button. Doesn't you only like, if you don't, so why, why would you want to have a negative gesture? Sure, right. but at the same time, I, I have seen, um, I, I was visiting a customer a few, a few months ago, and what they have is a, they have an API that automatically, if they get two thumbs up from um, managers, uh, that branch is deployed. So in some ways, they've used the approval uh, and so say, they, this looks good to me. They segmented out the authoritativeness of the identity. Mm -hmm. That's right. So there is some, again, data behind the exactly ever the rationale, whether you're leaving a trolling comment or um, or legit mm -hmm. authority. Right. Absolutely. But, but I mean, here, here's the thing: if, if you have a, an issue or you would give a thumbs down, there's a reason behind that. Explain the reason yeah, behind read it. Yeah, comment. Help, help make it better. Leave a comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't 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 just don't just comment to be you know negative or say I don't like this. Give a reason as to why and what you would change. That way you're mentoring, you're helping. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's where the thumbs down hurts because with the thumbs down with no with context, no with no yep. context, exactly, it's like just creates more 
problems because now it's like, in the absence of information, people will make stuff up, right? That's, <laughs> That's what right. communities do. That's right. And then the trolls jump in, right? So that attracts <laughs> trolls and then uh, I digress. Anyway, so back to GitHub. What's up for you guys now? Enterprise uh, product feeling good? Yeah. Uh, GitHub in general, good sentiment in, over there right mm -hmm. now? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a really, um, it's been an exceptional past few years. Um, it's been really great to see that the, I think the fun and excitement of, of dot com uh, has, has translated really well, well over to customers using GitHub Enterprise. Um, I, I, see, I see the same sort of, of collaboration that existed, that built 12 million developers on a platform now within the enterprise and I think with, with IBM, the up How long have you guys been with GitHub for? Um, I've been there for just over a year. And, and I've been there, uh, I'm on my third week right now. Third week, so you guys are new to the culture. <laughs> Pre pretty new to the culture, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Although, fairly speaking, I mean, we, we basically doubled our, our employee base last year. So I, I look at the list of employees and I was like, God, I'm, I'm right in the middle. It's kind of crazy. What did you guys do before <laughs> GitHub? So I, I, was, uh, I was at a mobile app startup for a while and then I was an industry analyst for a long time. Uh, I was an engineer. Which uh, firm? Oh, Gartner. Uh, Gartner, yeah. <laughs> okay, I was just crashing on Gardner earlier, but it's okay. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I was an engineer at uh, Boeing and Rolls-Royce, uh, and then after business school, I was in strategy consulting for a bit. Ran my own uh, consulting firm with, with startups and nonprofits. Well, Chris is not here. I wanted to uh, ask Chris some questions, but what, what I was going to ask Chris, and you could pass on the message. <laughs> Can I come into the White House room? I want to see that uh, White House. Have you been in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. walk into it every, every morning. <laughs> well, is it li totally it is replica? Legit. I've actually been to the White House on a num <laughs> like a number of occasions, and it is legit. It is as legit as it looks. So the folks out there, they have a room that's a complete replica <laughs> of the White House um, room. So that's yes, congratulations. <laughs> Sandy, congratulations. Your work in San Francisco continues to do well. We're going to be tracking it. We'll see you around uh, the town. Thank you. Very excited to be working with GitHub and GitHub Enterprise for all the developers out there. Yeah. Guys, thanks for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate it. Cube Madness starts March 15th. That's when we have our March Madness uh, Cube. We're all the nominations come in for the Cube guests and then they go head to head and it ends up becoming a hackathon because everyone stuffs the ballot and so we'll see how that hackathon goes this year. So look for Cube Madness. <laughs> go to Twitter and search hashtag Cube Gems to see the highlights from this interview right now coming off here and all the other highlights. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break.